Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's go over the code and get objects to grow, okay? So if we remember, I'm just gonna run this and it gets the Flutter logo, makes it small and makes it bigger, okay? What we're going to need to do is import the Flutter slash animation dot dart package, okay? That's a requirement. We're not gonna change any of this. First app is still new scaffold, new center, this, my animator is going to be the widget of animation. Um, notice you could use new, you don't have to, that's optional as of Dart 2.0, okay? But it is optional. If you're gonna get an object for animation, it starts from here and it moves. If it moves, you need to know the previous position before you can move it forward, right? So it's gonna have to be stateful. Right, so it's stateful because it in and of itself is moving on the screen. Um, in, so we're gonna have an extend stateful widget, and then we're gonna have to have this single ticker provider state mixin. Remember we talked about that last video, we have a ticker anytime we have animation that lets us know how fast to move this around. So that's a requirement. Then we're gonna have animation widget and a con animation controller widget. And notice that it returns a double, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So if I'm going to make um, uh, an equivalent in English, this animation object, it is not the object being animated, it's the animation object. So in a sentence, this is closer to the verb, okay? And the animation controller is the adverb. So the thing which you are animating would be the subject, right? So we'll just call this Flutter. Flutter is the subject, animation object is the verb, grow, and animation controller is the adverb, quickly. Flutter, grow, or grows, quickly. So we have to, in, in my mind, that's how I have to actually separate the things. So the animation object versus the controller. So if you want some other object, such as the Dart logo, the Dart logo can grow quickly. The Dart logo can shrink slowly. So, so if you can think about that, that's how we will use these objects themselves. All right. So in this, you're, we're going to do an at override and we're going to do the init state and we're going to get the super init state. I'm not exactly sure why you have to get the super class and get the init state for that. I haven't found a good answer to that. I, I think it's that it resets it to basically the, I think to a null, almost a zero type of state. So it resets it. So that's why every single time you have to do a super dot init state. I haven't found a good explanation to that. If anybody has a good explanation, can you leave a comment in the comment section? And by the way, when you leave a comment in the comment section, I really, really appreciate that, okay? So I really appreciate when you help me out here because I'm just learning. And many times I ask for some help and some clarification and you guys are wonderful and putting that explanation inside there and that really helps all of us a lot. So I greatly appreciate any any effort to help us out and that is so wonderful, thank you. So we're gonna use this controller and it's going to equal to the either the new animation controller, remember, or the animation controller. And so this is the adverb, remember? So how are we going to animate? So here we're going to do duration. Remember, um, in the animation, distance divided by time, we're going to use the time. So the duration, milliseconds, and then we're going to do vsync this. And this is almost every single time. I've never seen anything different because we're going to want to basically synchronize the, the display versus the underlying hardware. So vsync, dot, vsync this, and the duration, this is going to be nice and simple. Um, for the animation controller. It has other properties. What other properties does it have anyway? It has other property, properties right inside here, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to do the basics of duration, okay? So if we do the duration, we change the duration, it tells us how quickly it's going to grow, right? This is going to take one second to grow from here to here, right? What if I change that to like eight? It's going to take eight 8,000 8, milliseconds or eight seconds to grow from tiny to getting bigger. So if that was a thousand, flutter grows quickly at 8,000, flutter grows slowly. Again, remember the, the 
translating it to English, okay? Animation. This is the what it actually is doing, okay? So what the actual verb is, is grow. What do I mean by that? Well, what I'm going to say is tween. What's a tween? A tween, we'll go over this in more examples when we're doing other types of animations. But in this particular context, well, in all contexts, tween stands for in between. We have an image that is a dot and it grows. So it, the start is the image, uh, the, the dot, and the end is the image right here, which is 400 pixels high. So what is in between is, th is what the tween is. W what happens in between there? And that's why we need the state, right? So we know here is the beginning and here is the end. But what's the state? We have to know that every time to, in order to grow this thing bigger, right? So that's what the tween would actually be for animation in, in this particular um, application. And then we're going to animate it. And we're going to animate it according to the controller itself, all right? So animation dot animate the method animate for the controller. Great. But now how are we going to need to reset the state every single time so it gets bigger? So what I'm going to do is put the add listener. So we're going to open up a stream, listen to the stream itself. What's going to happen here? So just if you forgot, which I did, um, the two dots, notice there's no semicolon here, two dots refers the ad listener refers to the object here. If you had one dot, it would refer to the object here. The two dots refers to animation. So if you wanted to put a semicolon here and then put animation dot dot animation dot ad listener, you could do the same thing. So it would be the same. Let's just do that. That would work equally well. Okay. Um, let me format that. So that would work equally well, but for readability purposes, we like to do this, which is a course called the cascade. And let's remove that. Okay. So it listens and every time it starts and it resets the state in and of itself right here, here it's blank because we're not really doing anything. We're just resetting the state itself. What is it resetting its state to though? Okay, so when I said, remember a double right inside of here, what happens is when animation equals this right inside of here, it returns a, 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 a double. And what that double is, is somewhere in between here. So it's gonna start off with 0, 0.0, then as it moves forward, it's gonna return a next value and that state is going to be set inside of there and it's gonna reset every single time. But we don't really need to do anything different because the animation automatically resets the state overall. And then it continues to draw and redraw this thing as it gets bigger according to this speed of the controller because we're controlling the, 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 uh, the duration, all right? After it is done with the set state, it moves on and it moves the controller forward. So if it moves the controller forward, it's listening, redoes this controller, redoes the position, moves it forward a little bit more, and it keeps looping back and forth until it's finally done, all right? So let's keep moving on, and I'll, I'll go through a few things in a second here. It returns the value Animation in and of itself returns a value, animation.value, and when we build it, we're going to build a container, we're going to give it edge insets, and we're going to use the Flutter logo right here, and we're going to make it get bigger every single time. So what's the animation value? It starts with zero, both height and width. Then as it goes through, as it resets the state, it gets bigger and bigger. And how do we know what the state actually is? Well, we can actually print what the double actually is that the animation returns. Animation dot value. And we could print that out as it loops through. And then it, the controller goes forward, it sends it back, and it keeps going forward. See, those are the doubles that it is actually returning. If we make this slower or quicker, It just does it much faster, like that, okay? So it starts with zero, and it builds up to 400, which is from the beginning to the end. All right, so I hope that's clear. After it's done, we can always say something like animation, animation dot is completed, 
So let's just say, when is it completed? So it knows, no, it's not complete. No, it's not complete. Oh, by the end, by the way, yeah, it's complete now. Because the set state returned, I'm sorry, the animation returned 400. So it knows that the animation is actually complete. All right. So it is, in my mind, this is a little confusing because it's not intuitive in terms of getting the controller, moving it forward. It automatically sends the information over to here because it's listening to it and it resets the state every single time. So this is part of the things where you were going to have to just memorize the syntax to it and how it actually works. But I think that when we look back on it, it kind of does make a lot of sense. All right. If it doesn't make sense, please leave a comment in the comment section because I got to be honest, I'm struggling with this. Okay. This is a little bit painful. I take that back. This is a lot painful. So let's keep moving on different types of animations. Thanks.